June 16th, 2010. It's Bloomsday in Dublin, Ireland, and hundreds of people dressed in early 20th century costumes are crowding around Davy Byrne's pub. Hoisting pints of Guinness, they are celebrating one of Ireland's greatest writers, James Joyce, and his groundbreaking novel, Ulysses. I felt like I was in Ireland of a century ago. A bearded man comes up to me and he says, so who are you? What do you do? And I said, well, I'm a journalist, a travel writer. Oh, a failed talker, are you? <laughs> a failed talker. In Ireland, if you can't tell a story, you write one. Propelled by curiosity, I have been working as a journalist and a travel writer for nearly 30 years now. And I've found that the most meaningful trips are not vacations, they're pathways for discovery. They are opportunities for connection. So often I've been told, don't go, it's too dangerous. Don't go to Mongolia. Scary, isn't she? <laughs> Don't go to Cambodia or Guatemala or Kenya. But you never know in life. You never know. A country music concert in Las Vegas, shattered by gunfire. And right here in Sonoma County, entire neighborhoods consumed by fast-moving flames. Our safety is never guaranteed. So I continue to explore. And now, instead of taking trips, I try to let the journeys take me. Shortly after graduating from college, I had worked as a news reporter for a couple of years. But I wanted to learn Spanish. I went to Guatemala. It was the first developing country I'd really gone to and spent some time in. And I lived with a family but I only had $1,500 to last five months. So I got some work, I got some magazine work, and I filed my first travel story. I was loving life. I was having the time of my life there. I was, I was doing work I loved. I was meeting people. I was making it. I was even earning some money abroad. But I still faced one obstacle. I was still kind of shy. I still followed that childhood advice, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> but that trip was a turning point. I just started talking to people like this man in a produce market, just saying, what was your day like today? And he told me he got up early before dawn and had to haul these heavy bundles of vegetables down these mountain trails. And he was just trying to make a few quetzales, a few dollars to support his family. It was on that trip that I learned that people are eager to share their stories. And that's when I began to follow, as Walt Whitman advised, the song of the open road. Sometimes, even literally. When I was in Myanmar, the country formerly known as Burma, I heard this music coming through the window right at dawn. The, the clang of gongs, the rumble of drums. So I got up and I grabbed my camera and my notebook and I went in search of the sound. About half hour of walking, I met this guy on a mountain path and I said, can you point me to the music? His teeth were all stained red from chewing betel nuts and he barely spoke English, but with a little sign language, he pointed me in the right direction and I rounded a bend and I came upon this procession. I came upon these boys on horseback being, being shaded by golden umbrellas. And then at the front, there were these girls tossing popcorn. There was the smell of pine incense in the air. And I just walked with them. And then I asked, what's happening here? What's going on? And they said, the boys, some as young as four, they were parading from monastery to monastery, and the following day, they would take their vows and become young monks. An older woman in the procession said, please come to the village tomorrow. 
And I got there early, and she brought me a little tray of shredded ginger and peanuts and a cup of tea. And I watched these boys get their heads shaved. I watched them take their vows, and I saw them put on their burgundy monk's robes for the first time. And now, when I think about that trip, it's not the golden pagodas of Burma that I remember. It's this village and this rite of passage and how welcoming they were. And that ultimately is what travel is all about, these connections with local people. And of course, you don't have to be a travel writer to make these connections. Anyone can do this, anyone. For me, it comes down to three basic ideas. Number one, travel attentively with an open mind and an open heart. Number two, try new things. Why not? And number three, be spontaneous. Four years ago, my wife Jackie and I, we went to Ecuador and went up into the foothills of the Andes to a little town called Otavalo that's known for its beautiful weavings. We met this woman and her family in their workshop and they showed us their dyes, all these natural pigments. And they, they told us they had been weaving for seven generations right here. And then we went down to this park just to relax for an afternoon, let the world go by. And I saw some kids playing around a fountain and this man sat next to me, this stout olive skinned man. And, and I said, hey, are those your kids? And he said, oh yeah, this is all my family. And then almost instantly they were huddled around me on the park bench. He introduced himself as Erman. And his wife said, please come to our home and have some warm pastries and milk. And so we followed them home and they showed us black and white photos of their ancestors. And then the boy, he says, what's your Facebook address? <laughs> so I told him. And in a minute, he had our wedding pictures up on his little computer screen. <laughs> pictures we didn't even know were public. <laughs> and then Irman says, so, are you here for the festival tomorrow? And I was like, what festival? And he said, tomorrow is the grand competition in all of Ecuador to proclaim the winner of the contest for who makes the best roast pork. <laughs> this is so important that our president, the president of the, the entire country of Ecuador is the chief judge. <laughs> so the next day, we file into the stadium, there's bands playing, Vendors on the sidewalks, and we walk in, the smell of roast pork is in the air, and there is President Correa, center stage, kind of like an Ecuadorian Bill Clinton. He's welcoming people, his arms wide, he's having the time of his life, and, and he's tasting, it's amazing, one plate of pork after the next, relishing each bite, seeming to love each plate of pork more and more. And that got me to another universal thought, that maybe our politicians everywhere, they just love pork. Now, years ago in Washington, D.C., I was meeting with my editor at National Geographic Traveler, and he told me that one of the keys to having a strong travel story is to have a quest. Oops, went backwards. So, um, have a quest. And I thought about that when I was traveling in Guatemala not that long ago, and I heard that in the mountain town of Todos Santos, there were horse races right down Main Street on New Year's Day, right down Main Street. And so my friend, he had this old battered van called Orwell. It was a 1984 van, so he named it Orwell. <laughs> and we took the van up into the mountains and we saw these three kids and we asked, hey, are there horse races? And they said, oh, Claudio KC. Of course there are. So we got up early on New Year's morning, and I was kind of worried that the riders would be hung over from the New Year's Eve festivities the night before, but they weren't. They were still drunk. <laughs> Seriously. That's home distilled corn alcohol, and he, he's not giving up that bottle. And then they were off, charging down the dusty roads, kicking up clouds of dust, spectators on the hillsides watching, cheering them on. And this man next to me on the hill, he says, oh, 
Es muy peligroso. It's very dangerous. Sometimes people die. And in the third race, there was this guy. He was so drunk, he could barely sit on his horse. And, and the gun sounded, and the horses took off, and he starts wobbling, and then bam, he is down in the track. A couple of horses gallop right over him. I could not bear to watch. But the man next to me says, oh, está bien, es normal. <laughs> it didn't look normal, but luckily he was fine, and he hobbled to the side of the road. Now, that, that trip taught me another lesson that, that we, we sometimes, when we have difficult trips, that those are the trips that are the most memorable. And being asked to give this talk, being asked to give this talk led me to say, why, why do I still do this work? Why am I still a travel writer? Why do I keep throwing myself into situations not knowing how they're going to turn out? And here's the answer. When we travel, we narrow the space between others and ourselves. By seeing how they view us, we get a better perspective of who we really are. And even more important, we get to see them, not through our preconceptions, but for who they really are. Sometimes encounters last only a moment, but they can still resonate for a lifetime. These kids, They ran up to our safari vehicle in the Maasai Mara in Kenya, and they reached out for my friend's arm. They wanted to know what white skin feels like. They wanted to connect. And my wife in Guatemala, trying on a local headdress, at first this woman was hesitant to put that headdress on my wife, but when she did, she's like, "I now you look like one of us. <laughs> Other moments are less expected, completely unexpected. In fact, not long ago, I met a vision of my future self. I was traveling. <laughs> this was not staged or planned. I was traveling on a boat in the Galapagos, and I just met this other adventurous guy with a fondness for L.L. Bean sage green shirts and Merrill slip-on shoes. Other moments are more poignant. We met this Muslim family at a lake in Myanmar. They were celebrating a birthday. They invited us to share some cake. And now when I hear about the atrocities befalling the Muslims in Burma, it is not just another news story. It's personal. And that's the ultimate gift of travel. There is no limit to how much we can learn from others and no limit to how much of ourselves we can share. When we make these connections, we are much less likely to build walls and much more willing to build bridges. So go already. Life is short. The world is waiting for you. Ditch your itinerary. Travel without one and talk to strangers. Even more important, listen to them. Please listen to them. Challenge yourself. Go places you never imagined you would. You will create connections and memories that last a lifetime, and the world will be a better place. Thank you very much. <laughs>